Welcome to Daily Devotions with John Dyer, and we're carrying on in our series going for a gospel and Matthew. Today we're in Matthew chapter 26, and our key verse is going to be taken from Matthew 26, verse 36. It says, Then Jesus went with them to the olive grove called Gethsemane. There he said, Sit you while I go over there to pray. Today we're going to ask ourselves a question. How do we prepare for a tremendous task ahead? What would you do if you knew what was going to happen tomorrow? Would seeing into the future change your behavior today? If you knew the date of your death, would you change the way which you live today? Would it make you live with more urgency? These are interesting questions for us to ask. But the fact is that none of us know what tomorrow holds. None of us know what will happen or what's planned. Most of us know somebody who've been given a timeline for their life. They've had some illness and unfortunately been told they have X number of weeks to live. But even this is no guarantee. There is only one person who knows everything and that's God because he alone holds time in his hands. He alone is the beginning and the end. He is the Alpha and the Omega. God is the only one who knows our future and knowing our future he warns us to be prepared. In our reading today, Jesus knows what's in store for him. He knows that in just a short few hours, he's going to be beaten, bruised, and hung on the cross. He knows the tremendous task which lies ahead of him. And for each one of us, there's tasks ahead of us. There's trials awaiting of us that we are maybe unaware of. Maybe one of the reasons that God doesn't let us see into the future is because at that time, at this moment, we can't handle it. But the fact remains that even though we don't know what's going to come, we know that each one of us will experience challenges in our lives. And the only way for us to pass through those challenges victoriously is if we wake up and start to get prepared. Jesus prepared in solitude. Jesus knew that he needed to spend time alone with his father. So he said to the disciples, wait you while I go over there to pray. As he cried out to his dad. Each one of us also must spend time alone with God in prayer. We often say it's hard for us to do. But it's not as hard for us as we want to make it out. Now Jesus was constantly followed by large crowds of people everywhere he went. But he had to be very intentional in then about the way which he got alone with his father. But he did it. So what's our excuse? What's going to keep us from getting alone with God this week, this day? I'm not talking just about a few seconds before we take a shower or a few moments in the car as we drive in to work or to the shop. I'm talking about dedicated, quiet time alone with God. Don't wait for the storm to come before we prepare our boats ready. We need to start preparing now. Starting today, intentionally scheduling time to be alone with God. Schedule your time to be with him, just like you would the doctors or a bank appointment. Even better, schedule it like as if you're meeting a loved family member. Because that's exactly what you're doing. We are meeting with our loving Heavenly Father. Let's pray together. Oh, Father, we realize that we don't know what this day holds, never mind tomorrow or the years to come. But, Father, we find confidence, we find hope and certainty in the fact that you hold time in your hands. From beginning to the end, there you are, that you are the great I am. So, no matter what tomorrow faces, we have confidence that as we walk in step with you, that we're walking in your plans. But, Lord, we realize that we need to get ourselves in tune and in step with you. So Lord, help us to be um, committed to spending time alone with you in prayer. Father, for those who are listening today, I just pray that you really um, merit this time they've taken apart to listen to your word and you will help them to meditate on it throughout this day. They will have a real sense of your guidance and your spirit prompting them how to act. Father, we thank you so much for the way which you're maturing us in the faith, for the way you're molding us. Lord, we just pray today that we'll glorify you for our lives. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.